Hello. First of all, I have to apologize that I cannot be in Romania today. Uh, it's really a pity. Maybe I can do it in next year or in future years. But uh, nevertheless, I will try to do my best and uh, I have recorded my talk uh, for you beforehand. My name is Martin Ebner and uh, I'm working at Graz University of Technology, that's in Austria. Um, it's about 200 kilometers in the south of Vienna. And Graz is uh, the second biggest ca uh, town in Austria. And we have there five universities and one of them is the University of Technology. Um, there I am responsible for the e-learning department. So I'm the head of the e-learning department. As well, I'm also researcher at the Institute of Information Systems and Computer Media. And uh, for sure you guess it in the topic of e-learning, mobile learning, social media for learning, open education resources, and also in the topic of learning analytics. And uh, today I would like to talk about interaction in mass education. Mass education is um, a very, very important topic, especially in higher education. And if I'm talking about mass education, I think it's about 100 students, 200 students, 300 students in a huge lecture hall. And that means you are a teacher, you have to teach many, many people similarly in a huge lecture hall. And for sure, if you have uh, this experience, you know the kind of uh, questions or number of questions are very, very low. And their idea is as a how, what, or what can we do uh, to increase their interaction uh, during my lecturing in huge halls. Well, um, due to the fact that I'm not be able to attend uh, in person, um, you can tweet me. So I'm a very, very, I have a very, very long tradition uh, in using Twitter, and uh, you can use um, this. So I'm sorry, I have to switch it. You can use uh, my Twitter name is M Ebner, and uh, if you have now any question, I will be sure on my phone, and maybe I can answer your question. So just follow me up, and if there is any problem with the presentation, just let me know. Um, I would like to show you this picture. And ten years ago, and uh, when I begin with the talks, and um, I'm always saying, okay, that's maybe the future. Uh, today, I would say it's not really more the future, because if I'm talking for um, in these huge lecture halls, then I'm usually talking um, maybe to 200 students, and I'm also talking to 200 laptops, tablets, mobile phones, whatever. Though the huge and normal lecture hall is going more and more digitalized, though that means uh, everyone has at least one device, but most of my students have one, two or three devices which they are using during my lecture hall. And that um, let me think and uh, we have thought about it, what can we do, how we can bring these devices um, to the lecture back. And uh, first of all, if we take a look to interaction with a mass of students, then there are many, many different works and also in literature. One of the most famous one is uh, from Anderson. Anderson um, mentioned that there are mainly three huge and big problems. The first of one is feedback lag. Though he said uh, we have a missing feedback of learners during the lecture in these huge halls. And so there is no real feedback if you are talking, you just make a kind of presentation and there is nobody interacting you. The next uh, thing is the student's apprehension. That means they have fears, fears to ask you. Um, they don't like to speak because there is a huge lecture class and maybe uh, other ones are shouting or just thinking that what is a, a stupid question or whatever. And the, uh, the, the third um, issue is the single speaker paradigm. Um, that means that is a situation that uh, it is a kind of only one is speaking. Yeah, so that means I am speaking, the learner to the lecturers, and this situation leads uh, to much less 
and much uh, fewer participation. So what we can what can we do against that? And uh, to do a live test with you. So it is very difficult because I'm not here and I do not know how you are reacting and how long are you taking, but um, I like to do also this live test that you get the feeling how we can enhance with uh, innovative technologies the interaction in such big rooms. So first of all, there is an URL. The URL is called http backchannel dot cnc.io so just take your device it doesn't matter which one laptop mobile phone um, tablet PC uh, you just need an internet access and a web browser types this URL there and uh, then when you get uh, to this web page then um, you have to provide a code so you are a student in my lecture class and you see on the left side you have to join the lecture or on the right side you can create a lecture. So if you are uh, using the tool also in your lecture you have to create a lecture beforehand. I have already done it and you are now my student and you have joined a lecture and it is asked for a code. The code is here on this uh, slide. So you mean you have to type in this code and press the button join lecture. I hopefully you have done it yeah? and I'm going to, and you see of course also the URL and the code and now you come into the room and the room is quite simple so you, you just see on the left side um, the possibility there is a slider for you, three sliders. Sliders you can take with your mouse, with your fingers and you can just uh, move it from the left to the right or uh, from the right to the left. So there are just three uh, situations for you. The first thing is we are asking how do you feeling currently? Uh, you are lucky or you are sad in the lecture. Then I'm asking um, do you understand me? Do you really understand what I'm talking about? or I'm completely under, uh, and completely not understandable. And the third thing is I'm speaking too fast or I'm speaking too slow. So you can move around um, all the three sliders and you see immediately on the right side how the whole lecture room um, is currently voting. And you see also how many people are voting there. And I'm as lecturer, so if I'm doing the lecturer, I have no left side, I have just the right side. I just see what the audience is currently thinking about the lecture. And uh, so I can say, okay, I'm, it's okay, I'm too fast, it's not understandable, I have to move backwards. Okay, the, the mood of the room is just happy, they are feeling good, and so on. Yes, this tool uh, I've presented uh, to you is one of so-called audience response systems. It's also called RES. So they are called audience response systems. You have an audience who responded to something. And we divided audience response systems to two different types. Digital front channel systems and digital back channel systems. The difference between a front channel and a back channel is that a back channel is just running in the background. There is no real activity and what you have just tested is a back channel and it's a quantitative back channel one because the feedback system has defined options. You, have just, you are just able to move these three slides and it's running in the background. It does not disturb uh, the lecture itself. Of course, it would be possible to make also a qualitative one, so that you can type, for example, in the background text or something like that, to giving feedback. And the opposite is a front channel. And the front channel, we have also a qualitative as well as a quantitative one. And the qua qualitative one is, for example, if I have a kind of voting system with text. So I'm just asking the audience, just give me a text. Or um, if I said, okay, I have just four solutions, 
give me the right one and people are voting currently in the lecture room then we have a voting system with multiple choice for example that is a digital front channel, front channel quantitative one I would not like to talk also about it I have another website for you the next website is called realfeedback.io so just take your device also provides a URL typing in realfeedback.io and there is the same thing as you as we have before in the back channel you can join a survey you can create a survey on the right side I have already created a survey and um, you have to go now and to, uh, you have to provide again the code the code is uh, this one here so just type in and now you are taken to a website where is just a simple question and um, I'm just asking you do you like the idea of an RAS systems you have three options of course no it's not possible you have to say it's interesting it's amazing or it's just wonderful and you provide the answer just give it the answer and that's all and I as teacher will wait yeah and will wait some time and after some time I just stop the survey and we see the result immediately after I'm stopping so their main idea is I can just vote with people with any device we just need internet access and we get the results yes and um, just before we are talking about uh, didactical approaches I would also bring you in mind how the system is working and why uh, the system is uh, that's um, also a very interesting architecture of the system from a technical perspective you have on the left side the clients the clients are the students or are you in this case you have just a client it doesn't matter which one it can be a mobile device it can be a laptop it can be a computer it's just a device with internet connection and over the internet you connect to a server so if you give me the vote or you make just this instant uh, feedback you were driven to a load balancer and that is a very heavy thing because you have to imagine that currently maybe 1000 people 300 people 400 people are sending a request to a server and that is the main issue of the whole application that we are able to handle in parallel very very uh, much um, requests and then we have the application server there is the software is running when I'm starting stopping and so on so on and of course we need a database server uh, to store all the questions to say okay I like to store I would like to redrive it and whatever hopefully um, I, I had the, um, the power to give you the idea um, how this uh, back channel front channel systems are are working and um, I also like to give you some insights in the real life experiences that means we have uh, programmed and developed such systems and then we brought it to the classrooms to the lecture halls and we provided it to teachers I also do it myself and we were thinking how we can use it and um, what is the best way how we can use and this was I, I can now provide you the first three first of all we take a look to the back channel you remember just three slides and um, we have here for example a lecture a lecture from 5 p.m. to about 6 p.m. it's just about one hour one hour um, this lecture was lasting and I gave the students the possibility to make the feedback to say me okay I'm too fast and so ever and you see we taken each thing uh, each single slide each move of any slide and uh, there is the, you see how huge uh, people are using it so they have the possibility to make slides and so on and so on and it is the whole picture and our idea was also if I'm not able to react immediately in the lecture hall I can for example take this picture backwards so at the end of the lecture and take a look and say okay maybe here was a problem um, here it is running okay so it means people are more or less satisfied the speed was okay and was also understandable of course uh, this graph is also very hard to do so we make uh, we take the 
um, the graph of um, um, of all points. Yeah, and um, there was one. Uh, there are three graphs now because I have to explain something. If you look very very exactly to the back channel system, you also see if you move the slide and the slide uh, the slider is moving back automatically. Yeah? Because the main thing we saw after the first lectures were the blue lines. The blue line here means there was no aging effect. That means if you slide just once, the slider stops and um, the slider was in this position the whole lecture. Because maybe you forgot to, to say, okay, now I am very, um, uh, the speed is okay, it's understandable, and you don't need, uh, you don't move something backwards. So we have to think about an effect that the slider moves backwards um, over the time because um, of course uh, maybe uh, two three minutes later you're feeling completely different. And then we have um, experience for example with a linear aging effect and we saw that it's a so-called quadratic um, aging effect works much better and there we get um, all these this tops. Uh, you see here, for example, that I have maybe in my lecture problems in the minute of 6, 16, 18. There are the main parts where I was too fast, not so understandable, and uh, there we have maybe to think more how to can explain it better in a more deep. Then I like to discuss um, the experiences. So we, of course, we ask students, how do you like it? Um, is it interesting for you to have such a system? And the first thing is, students love it. So, yes, I gave them a tool for their devices and they love to vote. Uh, and they love to say, okay, um, you are not understandable. And they really using it. It was easy to use from the usability perspective. It was fast and it gives me as teacher as an impressive feedback. I see immediately if what the students are thinking about the lecture. But, and... There are also things um, which was very hard, because hard was to me to follow um, the second screen. Of course, I was, uh, was presenting with a usual PowerPoint or tablet PC, and I need a second screen where the audience uh, response uh, is running. And from my perspective as lecturer, it was very, very hard to talk, to present, to think what I'm talking, and to look at the screen and also think about, oh, what I have to do, I'm not understandable. So it's hardly not possible to think, oh, I'm not understandable and teaching um, very, very difficult content. So from this thing, um, I saw it must be a better system. It can't be a second screen because you have to look at it and you, and you, it's, it's just really hard to interpret what to do now. And um, you have problem as teachers to make appropriate react reactions because you just get the information you are not so understandable so the question is what is not so understandable and if you are asking the audience there is no answer so that the, the problem is that you just know that it's maybe too fast and not understandable but you have no details of what you should explain in more detail or something like that and that was also a problem of this system second we also um, make an evaluation about the real feedback system and the real feedback system we were asking teachers and lecturers afterwards they have um, maybe used the system for the whole semester so that means you have a lecture more than uh, just one week and they tell, told us we have a clear interface it's easy to use so they have no problem in using they have no problem the students have no problem. And um, also starting questions during the lecture was quite simple you know, because uh, so, uh, most of them prepared, in, uh, prepared the, uh, the questions and then they just started and stopped it. User, uh, students liked it again the system because it was um, a difference to traditional lecturing. There is a little bit interaction and something like that. Um, they used also real feedback to gather information about the knowledge of the students. Did they understand what I am explained for half an hour? 
and I gave them afterwards an example and just see, okay, they understand what I have explained. So, and now you see what also what was very hard and asking so-called live questions during lecture was not easily. So, our main idea was we make a tool which is quite easy. If you have an idea, just type it in, provide for solutions and just make uh, let students vote. The main problem is that you can make a good questions. You also know the solution, but you have to make three uh, wrong solutions which are not too sophisticated and but it's also not only clear what the right solution is and that's the problem. So you cannot provide in a very very fast way um, good wrong solutions. And uh, so the questions were more or less um, prepared for the lecture, um, before the lecture starts, um, in the evening or whatever. So you go there and uh, you have your uh, questions already uh, online. And um, I give you also the, the insight as of where teachers are using it, because especially the real feedback tool, also this voting system, um, have different kind of didactical approaches. Teachers were using it before the lecture starts. It's a kind of repetition of the last lecture. So before the lecture starts, you just provide three questions. You bring in mind what you have done maybe yesterday, last week. So it's a kind of repetition um, what you have done. Of course, um, the usual situation is a kind during the lecture for a kind of assessment. What is the knowledge the students about? Have I explained it? Uh, in a very good way. Then a very interesting didactical approach is during the lecture for discussion in groups. So you can make a question and say, okay, before you give me the answer, discuss it with your neighbor on the left side and on the right side. And people are, or students are thinking about the solutions they are discussing about and provide us their solution. And we see they have to discuss, they have to move around, they, have, they are activated, they are back um, and then they gave us the, their solution. And teachers are also using it to discuss homework. So that means you say there is a homework, when next time come back to my lecture and then I just provide questions where I can see people have done the homework because they understand now the question. And uh, there is a kind of control of course uh, and you can Use it. Um, what can I say to the voting system? Um, a very, very uh, important thing is that the students' attention is very high if you go voting. Though the whole attention students are providing an answer, and normally a student um, is convinced from his answer. So he exactly thinks he's right and he is looking at. Uh, the project or the solution and you provide immediately the feedback. So it is a huge learning process. We have also questions we did uh, more than one times. So maybe in the beginning of a lecture we provide a question and the same question we provide again um, in the third or the fourth lecture to see how people have people learn now uh, this and their um, success rate is very very high. It's easy to use and gave a very fast and great overview. Um, as I mentioned before, you have to provide questions before the lecture starts. There is no way to make live questions. Um, it's uh, much too hard to think about uh, good and bad solutions. So you have to create beforehand the lecture starts um, the questions. And you have to think that it needs time. Um, time means if you go to interact, if you start, you have to provide five minutes at least and then you have to discuss the solution. So you have to think that uh, your lecture is maybe lasting one hour, but you need maybe one or two ten minutes for a question. And that's of course also sometimes a problem because um, as usual I'm talking, talking and talking and then the, the hour is over and if I brought interaction to the classroom I just need more time and have to reduce my content. Yes, um, you see I come to the end. Um, I would like to conclude. Um, first of all, RS system are a very interesting option to enhance the interaction in huge lecture halls. So I would say 
just give them a try. If you're interested in it, just um, take um, these tools and use it for your own. Maybe I haven't not mentioned before, both tools I have shown you, you can use for free. So they're just online, you can provide a question, you get the code and you can start it. So you just need internet access, of course. Um, the main problem is that we haven't uh, enough solid research about how we can use uh, such RS systems and we need solid didactical concepts. We have to think when and exactly when did I interrupt my lecture and how can I activate and will I activate my students. And um, bearing in mind that uh, this RS systems means it's a challenging task for you as teacher, not for the students. The students have just to provide answers, so they have move sliders. But you have an additional thing that you have bearing in mind if you are teaching and uh, you have to react appropriate to such things. And um, because of course we are a university of technology and we are thinking also of didactical concepts but uh, mainly our mainstream is that we are thinking in, in new devices and how we can improve our uh, things. Um, we are currently working on the next prototype of RS systems. You see it's a Google Glass. And the Google Glass um, have in here, you see it very, very uh, small because it's a small um, interface, have already this back channel in this glass. It's our next approach and we are going to the lecture halls in just about one month to see how, uh, can you use Google Glass as a RDS system in huge lecture halls. For your attention, again, very sorry that I was not be able to be there. And um, again, just ask me on Twitter, ask me via email or whatever you, you see my follow my name, you say here my email address. I will I have already published the slide on my web blog, and if you're interested in MOOCs, you can also launch my MOOC platform uh, where we are doing massive open online courses. Thank you very much, uh, thank you for your attention and uh, have a good conference. Bye-bye.